I come from a two fair zone, it seemed like just yesterday I had to take the two of the five to the junction to walk the rest of the way. We used to hop and never drop a token over the turnstiles like Edwin Moses and run from the cops like Jesse Owens. Track stars riding in between the cars. Graffiti is freedom. You know, that's what graffiti is to me, pure freedom. There's definitely a rush. You're in there, you're sneaking in, you know, you're with your homeboys. There's like this feeling, you know, you hear trains, the motor kind of clicking on and off. You hear the tracks change. There's all these elements that add to the whole mystique of that's in a way, you know, you can't even really describe that to people now. I'm not entirely sure why I write graffiti. It's kind of how like when people have conquered something, they stick a flag in it at the end. And that's my version of my flag, maybe. If I'm upset or I have pain or rage in me, I'll just go out and just destroy shit. For me, writing was a release. It was an escape from, you know, my parents bitching and complaining in the house. It was an escape from my blog. I started writing to, to get away from all that, to assume another identity, to have a good time with my boys, to be down with, like, you know, some rebellious shit. You stay anonymous is who you are. And that's the whole point of it. Being like the wind, you know, you can't see him, but you can feel it. You could have this sort of anonymous thing about it where you could like have one kind of you portray yourself as one thing and then like change into my other costume and I'm this other guy. Superhero. Not many things I can compare to getting on the train daily and seeing your name up on every train you ride. There definitely is a certain high to it. You might feel invincible until people start going over your shit. I feel like a super actor, man, you know? It's, it's pretty cool. In the beginning, it was just about being famous. Kind of getting up to get fame. I mean, everyone wants to be famous. This graph culture is, is serious, man. You know what I mean? It's been handed down from generations to generations to generations, man. Only a real artist will get his light and will get to shine. I mean, a real writer is somebody who picks up a can and goes out and writes in the street. Illegally. They do what they want to do, when they want to do it. And they, and they do it gracefully and they do it with style. Graffiti writers are the most resourceful people in the world. I guess like most indigenous people, they made the best of what was around them. That same creative nature will help them find a way. The desire's there, people want to paint. They're not going to stop it completely. How are you going to pay for freedom, bro? You don't pay for freedom, you take it. My name is famous, my face, I know. Take a walk with me, we go and all Solid, solid feeling. Take a walk with me. Let's take a walk. Take a walk with me. Let's take a walk. Let's go bombing. Let's go bombing. Can't beat this shit. I can't. It's, it's, it's in me, you know what I'm saying? It's like a virus, you know what I mean? With, with, without a cure. I guess I feel natural high, a natural orgasmic feeling. It's like busting a nut. No doubt, definitely. I've been able to shake cigarettes and ex-girlfriends, and graffiti is the one thing that's uh, sustained in my adult lifetime. I don't know if it's necessarily euphoric. I mean, it's a little bit, there's paranoia, there's fear. It's a little tense. It can be tense. Once you got it, it's like tag you it now, you know what I mean? I can't stop it. I mean, maybe it's a, um, a disorder. They need to make an AA program for graffiti, man. Even when you're too old for it, it's hard to quit. It's a disease. I know I have to slow down. And the day is not tomorrow or the day after that. Tagging is the development of graffiti. Graffiti developed out of tagging. There was nothing else that's now called graffiti that didn't, it all started with tagging. That's how it started, tagging. Because from tagging, it went on to bubble letters, from bubble letters went on to, to style. And Just big tags, they got bigger, then they got filled in wider, wider, and then outlined, and then it went off from that. I think that having a good tag style is important. I think it's very important. I think it's like having a good smile. It's kind of what greets the world and people around you. Good tag has style. It has uh, some type of flow. Uh, it has legibility. Uh, and it also has repetition. You gotta write it over and over and over and over again. You want your shit to look good, stand out, and look original, and nice and clean. It's a logo, you know what I mean? And with that, you can take it, you can take it beyond. It's, it's, it's basically like the UPC symbol, you know what I'm saying? Get scanned, to get scanned every day by the human eyes. Ultimately, advertising 
you know, for those individuals is something that they will always be connected to. Tag is your, your name, your logo, is the most important element of bombing. I think it's strange that some people have mastered piecing and can't tag. But I've seen riders that have, you know, amazing throw-up styles and can't even throw a tag. Sometimes it suggests that you might paint a little bit more than you bomb. And usually you bomb and then learn how to piece. So the evolution's a little off as far as I'm concerned. Your tags is like your soldiers. You lay them down strategically around the city. You know, the more soldiers you have in an army, the more chances you have to win the war. Your tag, your signature is who you are as a writer to the rest of the world, to the rest of the writing community. So once you, once you get your tag, that becomes who you are. If a tag's like a single adult male living alone, a throw up is like when he's married and has kids. A throw up is something you do quick, in a matter of seconds. I mean, you just do a quick fill in, a quick outline. You could do hundreds of them. They're quick and easy to do. If they're done correctly, they look quite good. Some people don't think so, but fuck them. I love throw ups, man. I love doing throw ups everywhere. I love throw ups. I love throw ups. I love doing throw ups and fill ins, dusty ones, solid ones. Ones without shadows, skinny caps, fat caps. You could express yourself differently with each one. Each one is, is, has its own identity. A lot of people think that it's a lazy version of doing their name or a simplified bubble style of doing their name, but there legitimately is an art to doing throw-ups. You know, and when I grew up, just about everyone that had a throw-up rocking had a dope throw-up. So the throw-ups are like a tank and shit. You gotta lay the tanks down, not as much as the tags, but every now and then, for, for strategic war purposes. You need the big bangers to blow them out. Go crush a yard, go crush a layup with hundreds and hundreds of throw-ups. If you went and did one piece because you thought you were some, you know, you're the man, you want to do one whole car, you spend your whole night doing one piece, that shit gets destroyed, you weren't even there. You did throw-ups, you're going to be up for weeks. If you have a beef with a rider, throw-ups is like, it's like your ammunition. You go out there and destroy everything they have with throw-ups. A little salt in the wound, you know? If somebody has a whole car that's rocking that might have taken them all night to do, I can take that thing out in about five minutes. I like going over people with my shit, man. I just love ragging niggas. If you go over me or any of my peoples, I'm going over you for life. And the feeling, I'm feeling this very quick way to just cover up somebody's shit like they wasn't there. You can't tell who was under this shit. The philosophy of piecing and burning it's based upon styles. Styles evolved out of throw-ups from, you know, riders just adding colors and arrows and, and connections. The pieces back then were big renditions of tags, and it was all about making their name more visible. These are the cats who are developing styles and making their names flip. You know, making them block letters, making them marshmallow letters, making them, you know, platform letters or whatever, making them British letters, all these terms that they were using they invented that shit. I appreciate Wild Styles. Um, the direction graffiti is going in right now, I guess a lot of kids are doing 3D stuff and recycling other people's Wild Styles. Whether you call it computer rock or whether you call it marshmallow or whatever, what you do is your style. It's your, it's your imprint on your letters. I think style is a personal taste. Some people that are, would be considered toys have style. To me, style is like a flow, a rhythm to your letters. You know, you gotta make it cartoon-like, make it, make it have some type of life in it. So it's like a foot, a knee kicking. I try to do my S original. Half, half of New York City took it. And my F is fat like me. If something looks like extremely sterile and generic to me, it loses its sense of style specialized caps and rulers and levels and it just, it, it, it almost, it almost becomes like plastic fucking surgery. Does that girl really look good with fake breasts, Botox and like huge bubble lips? Some guys, yes, she's gorgeous and I'll go all out for her. Other guys, no, she's like a freak of nature. <laughs>